Petrucucci 235, now that's a lot of ocelot. So yeah, it's been another one of those weeks where I'm balancing doing nothing against not actively wanting to upload things on social media because I'm so anti-social media now, it's just, it's depressing. Uh, but a friend of mine did let me know about the story of Phoenix Jones, a real-life superhero, not uh, unlike Batman in his edgy, violent, ultimate self-defeating behavior. But apparently it's true there were there is a community in America of people who try to fight crime as, as active civilians in superhero costumes. Phoenix Jones, look into it. It's great. Uh, I also saw a video of someone who was copying an image using... Uh, string to accurately measure all the anchor points of an image and I was thinking is this any different from photocopying is there any value in this I haven't made a, a concrete decision on that but yeah it's, it's 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 curious I'll look into it more um, I also went back to my Udemy coloring uh, tutorial and this is what I learned yes um, I'm halfway through the course and it seems that the rest of the course is just being shown how to do what he's already shown me the end results of, so there's nothing more to learn. So I found myself wanting to um, spend more time drawing faces. Uh, Google made that quite uh, unpleasant. Um, there's a lot of tutorials, especially on three quarters side views of faces, that aren't helpful and are actually factually inaccurate. Or at least there's one that's factually inaccurate and it keeps showing up in the search results. So I kind of sidestepped the issue and thought well you know let's just look at ears you know let's draw 100 somethings let's do some ears let's do some noses let's do some mouths uh, so I went back to my um, my Bern Hogarth dynamic anatomy book and I'm just you know I was looking at eyes last week so I was just looking at the way he draws ears and then you know Loomis has a little bit and I do mean a little bit uh, in drawing the heads and hands on ears specifically because, well, every time he draws a head, there's typically two ears attached, so it's not like he's got to dwell on it. And ears aren't that interesting. Uh, you don't really need to know how to draw ears accurately unless you're doing medical illustration, really. Uh, so what I found is I kind of got photo reference off of Google um, whatever showed up if it was if there was an ear in it I would draw the face the head but really I was looking at the ear um, it was pretty much oh, this is a nasty pun in one ear out the other when it comes to to the the retention of information when it comes to the, the shapes the internal shapes of the ear because ultimately you can get by with doing very not a lot um, and at this point, I was just like, let me just draw it here freehand. What do I think I know? And it's like, well, you know, you've got an outer rim, and then there's this kind of Y-shaped thing in the middle. Uh, and then there's like a hole by above the earlobe. And, you know, that's kind of what we think of when we think of the ear. The less uh, you bother to render it, the more accurate it looks, because no one cares. Uh, speaking of rendering uh, inaccurately, what I've been tending to do when it comes to the way I'm kind of sketching out the rough images before I do the detail, I'll just put some lines somewhere. They're usually wrong, and I spend more time correcting the initial sketch than I do actually benefiting from it. Like this picture of some guy. Um, his eye line was not quite perfectly horizontal, but I didn't really pay attention to it until I kind of got to the end of me sketching it and realized fuck I should have been doing this at the start I do need to find a much better way to render my images from the start um, I did toy with the idea of looking into doing some perspective sketches this week modern day James on YouTube is a uh, clearly a technical illustrator he knows what he's doing when it comes to mechanical design which is why I've subscribed to him but Christ almighty he's turning it into maths and I object <laughs> I don't want to do maths um, I want to do art, I want freeform lines, but yeah, whatever. Uh, so I kind of thought, you know what, let me see if I can't start a digital sketchbook, just draw random stuff, and when I want to change direction, I change direction. I don't worry about rendering, I don't worry about detail, I just spend some time messing around with stuff and, dare I say, have fun. So what did I end up doing? Well, I have this tendency to gravitate towards Metal Gear Solid when I'm not thinking about anything specifically, which is hilarious because I haven't played it in years. 
so you know, you know, the first boss fight is Revolver Ocelot versus uh, Solid Snake. Unless it isn't, I think it is. Um, I've referenced these characters in the past, um, and I was just trying to get a feel for the image I was trying to craft, which was a combination of other images I've seen in the past and maybe the cutscenes from the game. And um, here I am, you know, it's it's you know. Baker or whatever his name is is being held hostage, strapped to some kind of um, wall, and you know I'm sitting here like roughing out the chains, and I'm like, there's no way I'm going to draw like ten chains to render this or a million bricks to make this look cool. So I kind of thought, yeah, I got the rough idea. Let's just let's just draw some revolver or slot headshots. Let's let's figure out how we draw old people, because there's a bit in Burn Hogarth's dynamic anatomy that does focus on how to draw older people. This is also true of Andrew Loomis's drawing the head and hands. And I wasn't really paying attention to it, but I was kind of by osmosis picking things up. I thought my first picture there of Ocelot, a little, little too old. Let me make him uh, a little more chiseled, a little more spry. Um, I don't know who my I'm thinking of when I draw this. Maybe that guy with the eye patch from uh, Harvey Birdman. I feel I look at this guy and I just think he is memes. And then I do the third image, well, fourth image of Ocelot. Um, I feel like the work I put into to figuring out how eyes work, especially the the bit underneath the eyebrow and above the upper eyelid, um, it's helping me form faces in uh, conjunction with the fact I'm using um, a chalk brush to, to, to kind of render black details and a light opacity charcoal brush. To kind of do my rough sketches. I feel like it's putting me in a place I quite enjoy being. I suppose this is the kind of stuff I could just dump on Tumblr and run. The last thing I put on Tumblr was my Turtles uh, colouring illustration. And I have literally avoided going back to check all the likes it didn't get. <laughs> That's my relationship with social media right now. Uh, long may it last. Eh? Um, but that brings us to the end of Pecha Kucha 235. And I will see you next time.